Um, it's great to meet you. I want to begin our conversation before we get into your work and your life and, makes, sure. and what makes you who you are by asking, we're getting on the four year anniversary of this pandemic. How did you get through the pandemic and how did it subsequently change you? Oh gosh. Well, um, our, I mean, our industry specifically, but my company just completely blew up in a good way. Uh, it was, we started the year off with three people on our team and ended the year with 12. Now we have over 20. And it was kind of a catalyst for a lot of business owners that need admin support, was no longer able to, uh, like just with the changes and the pivoting of their business, maybe they weren't able to hold on to an admin, or maybe it was the realization from being home that they no longer wanted to do everything in their business. And so that was their, their sign to reach out and get some help in their business. And so there was a, 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 just a, a, a huge need that overnight got uncovered. And we were there having been, I started the company in 2018. So we had already been established. We'd already had things kind of set in place and we were just along for the ride. <laughs> For the next two years so that was that was a very busy two years i imagine so so let's get to the heart and soul of what you do on a daily basis i'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders it's career day and one of the kids <laughs> says hey what do you do for a living how do you answer that child you know the receptionist or the secretary that sits at the desk that schedule like answers the phone schedules appointments that's what we do only we do it in the comfort of our own home so how would you explain to me what you do, what your company exactly does? We provide executive assisting and general admin support and do more marketing tasks for business owners and okay. nonprofit organizations across the globe. Okay. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream? I wanted to, uh, honestly, I wanted to be an author. <laughs> okay. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about go back to where you were born and raised and how these seeds got into you to to become who you are today. How did this evolution happen? Oh, gosh. Um, let's see here. Born and raised in Salem, Oregon. So I honestly have not moved far <laughs> now that I am residing and have uh, stayed in Vancouver, Washington. And oh, gosh, like, I mean, you want my life story? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> we could do a, a clip notes version of this point. Clip, right? Yeah. Well, I, I will share this, even though it really doesn't have, like, I, I don't feel like it has as much of an impact as to where I ended up today. Well, I mean, it, it might. So I was a teen mom. And in that realm, I actually thought I was going to go to nursing school. I'm a nursing school dropout. I ended up, I really wanted to do the administrative side of nursing, like nurse case management, all of that. But when I found out that I needed to touch people, um, to get through nursing school, I was like, mm, I'm out. Yeah. So then pursued uh, like the bit business administration side of healthcare. Was in healthcare for I don't know twelve years. Um, then became a business management consultant for a local firm here, and working with all of the different types of businesses, whether they were well established, just starting, they were all just heavily inundated with their admin tasks. And so many people don't start their business to do the admin work that they have. And they have a really hard time getting that eagle's eye view of what really needs to be happening in their business because of those admin that those admin tasks. So just in my own local business community here, I saw a big need for admin support. And so kind of started it as like, well, this would be a nice side hustle. So I did consulting and started my business, did that for about nine months until I realized like the, the agency was growing much faster than um, I anticipated, but it would never get to the point where I really wanted it and started envisioning it going unless I focused on it full time. So stopped consulting, focused on my business and have been doing it ever since. So, you know, I remember one of my first jobs out of college was I did desktop publishing for a home health a consulting company. And I remember I was laid off at one point 
and we were part of admin staff. So I keep thinking about the fact that that's what you do and that's what people need. And that was kind of their thing. They had to get rid of admins because they couldn't, I don't know. I can't remember. That was around, that was a weird situation because that was back in like 98. And I think there was mm -hmm. a bunch of home health fraud that was going on at the time. And the industry was just getting gutted. So um, it, it's interesting. Um, let me ask you this. Who's been kind of a hero or an inspiration for you in your career? Oh, gosh. Probably my former boss, uh, April Salisbury. She's the one who owns the consulting firm that I used to work for. Um, I've actually followed her in three different areas of like just three different companies. She was the CEO of a previous company before she started her own thing. And being able to see how she uh, like has grown her consulting firm in such a um, what's the, like, and just, she's so valuable and she brings so much value to our local business community. And she doesn't have this, this huge, like need to, you know, span the entire country. She is more focused on, you know, wanting to support her own, like every, everything locally. Uh, I don't know. She's just, she's just a, a woman of great integrity and, She's incredibly humble, incredibly intelligent. And so it's been wonderful just to see her grow in all of these different areas and then have such a success in her own business that's, you know, local, just a small local business. You know, we touched a little bit at the beginning here about, you know, football and the Chiefs and being here in Kansas City. And, you know, sports teams operate a lot like really good businesses. What's what's a business model or a company out there that you admire for the way that they execute and do things and stay in front of people and treat their employees? Is there a model of a business out there that you admire? You know, the first thing that comes to mind, and I'll be honest, I'm this was probably a good 10 years ago, but Zappos uh -huh. is like a, a something that comes to mind because they're just so heavily customer service oriented and not only they are they known for that and the fact that they're willing to help anybody who you know calls on the phone and has some crazy question or need uh but also the environment it sounds like working for zappos it makes them like everybody wants to go above and beyond. They've made it fun. They probably gamified it in some way, shape or form. And it's this community, like the, the, the company culture of it is something to be, I, I just absolutely admire that because it's difficult to create such a company, like a strong company culture that it, it just bleeds into everything that they do. So if you could meet one person alive on the planet right now and spend some time with them that you admire, who would that be? Who would you love to meet and talk to? Ooh. You know who I would love to meet and talk to? I actually, her name, uh, the name fails me. I sincerely apologize. But okay. I would actually love to meet the owner of Belay Solutions. Belay is a very large US-based virtual assisting agency, like 10 times larger than me, I am. And so she wrote a book and uh, would love to just sit down and talk to somebody in our own industry to talk about the things that she's seen, all of the growth that we've seen just in our industry in the last five years and what she thinks will be happening with all of these changes, AI, all of the stuff. Yeah. And where we believe, where she believes that we will be and how we can continue to provide value to our clients. So speaking of AI, the bread and butter of you is obviously that personal connection. I mean, human beings yeah. are are the top of the food chain, but AI is getting to this very weird point where we mm. all like aspects of it and yes. we're afraid of it. But in your line of work, where are you at? How are you falling on that line? I think it's incredibly important to continue to grow and change and evolve with the technology that's offered to us. AI has made out like just our internal processes simplified, easier. Um, and I, I truly believe that we will continue to use AI to help us 
manage our clients' work um, as we continue to provide a personable uh, service to them. I don't believe that humans, like that human interaction is going to be replaced anytime soon. But if we can leverage AI in our own like day-to-day -day work, we could ultimately save a lot of time and continue to increase the amount of work that we're doing for our clients. So they'll see the benefit of it for sure without necessarily them feeling like they have to learn all of the ins and outs of it while still, you know, um, so, and then we'll be able to kind of manage that on our end as well as oversee it. So they don't have to. Yeah. So in your life as, as an entrepreneur and a professional, what's been one of your favorite success stories? Oh, hmm. Favorite success stories. Um, for myself personally, my favorite success story, yeah. building and maintaining a caring company culture is probably one of the biggest success stories, success stories for me. Um, my team is everything to me. And I, one of the hardest parts about starting a 100% remote business is how do you continue to connect with your your employees and contractors in a way that they feel invested in the success of the company. And it was a learning curve for me, for sure. Um, especially when I had started out with just one employee and here I am going out, you know, networking, trying to uh, get more clientele. And here she is feeling like a lone island um, doing all of the client work, right? And so being able to, over the years, build this amazing team with such a, like a rapport and great attitudes and everybody just supports everybody. It's one of the biggest benefits of being a part of my team and have had many people come in just talking about how they've never worked in a, an atmosphere not even just remotely, but just uh, that's been so positive. And then that really, like, it it really sinks into everybody's gratitude for having a remote position that allows them to have the flexibility that they want that really benefits their life. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the 20-year-old version of you, and you can give that version of you a piece of advice, one piece of advice based on the wisdom mm -hmm. you've gained in your life. What advice would you impart on that young version of you? Oh, I would probably say start learning about business now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's never too early. So yeah. of all of the things that you've done in your life, everything that you've done and become and evolved into, what are you the proudest of? Hmm. That's a lot. I, I feel proud on, about a lot of things, actually. Um, I probably, you know, one of my, one of my, I guess, raising well-adjusted children. Yeah, is probably my proudest moment. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Ooh. You know, if I'm trying to be funny, I would always say like, well, I see myself as a benevolent leader to my team, but, <laughs> um, you know, uh, you always get a glimpse of this, especially when you are running a team and you do get that feedback, right? Uh, and that's so hard because it's like, it always takes you aback. Like, oh, they really believe that? That's great. Yeah. <laughs> like they really, they see me as that. Who do I think I am? I think I am someone who is not afraid of change and loves learning and 
loves people. Um, and I, and, and again, like the, the people around me in my life, whether that's friends, family, my team just mean the world to me. I guess that's, that's me simplified. <laughs> All right. I like it. So if anyone out there wants to hire you, learn more about you, reach out, what's the best way to do that? Uh, you can go to our website. You can learn about our virtual assistance, uh, virtual assisting services at virtualkathy.com. And that's Kathy with a C. And we're on all social media platforms. If you want to see me make a fool of myself, I am on TikTok. I do that often. Um, I think I'm hilarious. And so uh, that's the best way to find us. All right. I'm going to check it out. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for your story, for your time today. Best of luck with everything. Thank you so much. You bet. And how do you pronounce your last name correctly? Belargin. Okay. Want to make sure. You never, ever want to <laughs> assume anything. Kathy, <laughs> exactly. thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much for the time. You bet. Best of luck. Take care.